I hope you had a great 4th of July. So today we're talking about Tesla's production numbers, their deliveries, and what the analyst's price target is for Tesla. So stay tuned. What do you mean the recovery story has begun? The comeback story for Tesla. Did it Tesla. need a comeback? I think it did because they had massive headwinds in China. And now we're seeing the comeback play out. Now, two Q deliveries next week. I think that's really going to be the last uh, of really some of the worst that we've seen in China. We're starting to see a mini recovery in China. The comeback kid story for Musk is starting with, of course, RoboTaxi Day in August. I believe this is a stock that's going to have a massive run uh, second half of the year. What do you think has been then that headwind that you talked about? Is there one thing you could point to? Look, EV demand's clearly been soft globally, but it's really about China. I mean, China was a massive talent for years, became a headwind, but now, Brian, you're not seeing those price cuts anymore. So you're starting to see stabilization, China demand starting to increase. And I think the stock's telling you, and we believe next week's just another sign of it, is that the worst is in the rear view mirror for Musk and Tesla. Tesla's latest vehicle production numbers might be responsible for the stock to surge. And of course, analysts will always increase price predictions for a company when this happens. Vetbush analyst Dan Ives raised Tesla's price target to $300 amid one trillion tech potential. Ives says Tesla is the most undervalued AI name. Actually, Dan Ives' bull case is $400 for 2025 as the company's AI story gains traction, he says. I mean, we saw demand soften in China and globally for EVs. Boom came off the rose. They missed deliveries in one queue. But our whole call is adult in the room must steps up, turns us around, cuts prices. Then the mojo returns. And that's what we saw yesterday. I mean, the two queue deliveries handily beat whisper and the street and paul i believe we're going to a historical period because robo taxi day august 8th we just raised price target to 300. i could argue fsd and autonomous tesla is the most FSD undervalued is full, full self-driving full self-driving tesla is the most undervalued okay. ai play in the market everything you just said is about automobiles if we can all agree toyota is the machine of the world in automobiles to be charitable, it's trading at 10 times earnings. How do you buy Tesla? Forget about the disasters of America when the best run machine is running at 10 times earnings. Yeah, I think Tom brings up like probably the biggest debate point in Tesla. I've always viewed Tesla as a disruptive tech company. I never viewed them as an auto company. And I think more and more the software piece, especially when it comes to FSD and autonomous, that is ultimately what's really going to distinguish them more and more going forward. The way that you get to evaluation, trillion, trillion, half, two trillion Tesla, it's not auto. It's that this is essentially an AI play. It's data driven. And the sum of the parts model starts to play out. That's why this, I believe this is a huge, marks a huge inflection point in the Tesla story. And I think August 8th, look, just like we talked about with Apple going to WWDC with Cook and, and the AI strategy, this will be a historical moment for the Tesla story. So this is what happened. I've stuck to X announcing the revised price target, citing a positive shift in Tesla's demand story for the second half of 2025. He also highlighted the potential of Tesla's AI story, which he believes could be worth over $1 trillion, making it the most undervalued AI name. The new price target represents a significant increase from the previous $275. He said, we believe the Tesla demand story has made a significant turn for the positive heading into 2 age 2025. Now, Tesla's AI story would be worth 1 trillion plus and is the most undervalued AI name in our view. Despite a year-on-year -year decline in a second quarter deliveries, Tesla's performance has improved from the first quarter. This has seen as a positive sign by Ives, who had previously suggested that the worst may be behind Tesla after the second quarter deliveries. And this is why this matters. The recent developments at Tesla have been closely watched by analysts and investors. The company's stock rally after the second quarter deliveries report, with some speculating that the company may have achieved escape velocity. This term refers to a situation where a company's stock price breaks through a resistant level, leading to a significant upward trend. And despite being a popular stock to short, Tesla's strong performance has led 
to a warning from CEO Elon Musk that short sellers will be obliterated. The company's second quarter deliveries report has been a turning point with some analysts suggesting that the worst may be behind Tesla. Goldman Sachs maintains neutral on Tesla and maintains $175 price target, while Tesla at this point of this recording is trading at $247. Guggenheim mm-hmm. adjusts price target for Tesla to $134 from $126 and Tesla trades at $247 and maintains a sell rating. Now Tesla has an average hold rating and a price target that ranges from $85 to $310 according to analysts polled by Capital IQ. Truist securities analyst William Stein maintains Tesla with a hold rating and maintains a $162 price target. Hmm. And B of A security raises price target on Tesla to $260 from $220 maintains a buy rating. Canaccord Genuity Analyst George Canarigas maintains a buy rating on Tesla and raises price target to $254, raised from $222. And Tim Higgins, he's business columnist at the Wall Street Journal, also a CNBC contributor and author of Power Play, Tesla, Elon Musk, and the Bet of the Century. Also with us, George Gianaricus is an analyst at Canaccord Genuity. George, uh, these numbers, delivery numbers, are better than you expected. Looks like some of those big inventory numbers are being worked down here, but there's still questions about demand and supply from the Chinese makers out there. So what keeps this stock moving in this positive direction? Well, thanks for having me on. And we think the really important metric from a stock perspective is to watch year over year growth trends. If our numbers are right over the next couple of quarters and next couple of years, the year over year growth in earnings and non-gap earnings and revenue likely bottomed in the first quarter. And if you pay attention to what the stock's done, it probably bottomed in the first quarter. And what gives us a little bit of conviction that they probably will hit that 1.8 number and likely grow into next year is that they promised to release new vehicles. We don't know what they'll look like towards the end of this year and into early next year. So that gives us some confidence and hope that they can continue that growth trajectory over the next several quarters. Tim, how important is the premium end to Tesla right now versus that low end where they're facing this challenge from Chinese makers, and and I don't know if they're going to have the same kinds of help from the government, uh, you know, either in the forms of tariffs or incentives to keep them moving vehicles versus this new Challenger. Yeah, this is one of the, the challenges for Tesla right now is they're kind of stuck in the middle. You look at the Chinese rivals and they're kind of biting at the, the low end of the market, uh, appealing to people who are price sensitive. But then at the high end of the market, you're seeing new entrants out there from Lucid and in China itself from some of the, the local makers there. Uh, they're the hot new product to have in a market where early adopters or, or people want to have the newest thing. Tesla's lineup long in the tooth and kind of fighting for that middle realm where it's not quite sure if how hot the market is. Phil, what would you add to that? What would be the next uh, important data point to watch? Well, it's the robo taxi. I mean, this is the one that everybody is keying in on because people want to know if there is truly going to be the level of detail that will give them confidence to say, you know what, this strategy makes sense. On paper, what Elon Musk has said, whether you go back to the last uh, earnings call or previously, on paper, it makes 100% sense in terms of what he wants to do. But the reality is getting RoboTaxi up and running and truly having an impact in terms of saying, okay, we have a fleet out there and it's X hundred thousand or you know however many vehicles and, and some seeing some trajectory, that's what people want to see. So August 8th is, the, is really what people are focusing on, Kelly, because if it's Another case of, well, we think we're going to be able to get this, but we don't have a whole lot of specificity. I think it's going to be a disappointment. Right, exactly. But, George, for you, how important is that as well? When it, a lot of people would say robo-taxi is a wonderful long-term uh, aspiration, and yet in the near term, how tangible is it? Look, it's an incredibly important date, like Phil alluded to. We'll talk. We'll see what exactly they talk about, about their long-term business model. But one key metric, Key, key metric that we were focused on when they report earnings is FSD, full self-driving take rates. They lowered the price of it significantly during the quarter. 
They gave a free one month trial. And to the extent people believe in autonomy, which we do, it'll be really important to see how many people opted in and bought that software this quarter. And that is the key to the near term story in our opinion. Mm. So here we go. Tesla Rati reported July 2nd, Tesla Energy is no longer a sleeping giant. During the second quarter of 2024, Tesla Energy was able to deploy 9.4 gigawatt hours of energy storage products. This represents the highest quarter deployment of energy storage products in Tesla's history to date. Tesla officially reported its second quarter production and delivery numbers this week and with the three month period coming to a close, the automaker has also set its earnings call for a quarter ending in June. On Tuesday, Tesla reported producing 410,831 EVs and delivering 443,956 units in the second quarter of the year. The figure were down from 479,700 and 466,140 EVs produced and delivered respectively during the same period in 2023. Of the Q2 deliveries, Tesla reported the vast majority coming from combined sales of the Model 3 and Model Y, landing at 422,405 unit total. As for the other models, including the Model S, Model X, Cybertruck, Tesla says it delivered 21,551 during the quarter. Tesla delivered 443,956 vehicles, beating Wall Street expectations of 438,019 vehicles. This was labeled the first positive surprise of the year by Morgan Stanley analyst Adam Jonas. Adam Jonas is a smart guy and the way he looks at things. Jonas mentioned Tesla's inventory reduction, Tesla delivered 33,000 more units than it produced, which means its inventory is starting to thin out. Now, this is a good thing from the consumer perspective because, in theory, it means that Tesla cannot keep up with consumer interest. It basically means demand is healthy. Morgan Stanley and Vetbush are agreeing by saying Tesla's stock has evidently got its mojo back. And investors will like this one as of Wednesday, July 3rd, 2024, Tesla shares have exploded over 26% within five days, nearing what would be the highest price of the year within $2 of value. And this is pretty awesome. Now, Tesla has launched the perfect discount for car buyers just in time for the 4th of July. As Americans celebrate Independence Day, Tesla will be giving anyone who is active military or a veteran, along with their spouses, a thousand dollar discount on a Model S, Model 3, Model X and Model Y. The discount was just recently launched. Tesla also has a veteran employment program and has a special page to attract military members specifically to its company. Thank you for being here. And if you want to know a little bit more about Tesla's robot taxis, you can click on this video right here. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Goodbye.